Welcome back to the channel guys. I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are around this beautiful planet of ours. Today, we need to answer those massive questions after our huge bullish checklist target has been hit on the macro scale. So we're looking at the S&P today. Also updating Bitcoin, we'll update Ethereum on that recent pump after the CPI news. And of course, I'll dive into the details of the news just a little bit more using the market sentiment. All right, so like, subscribe, I'll give you five seconds on that. Let's dive into the video. So we're looking at the macro moves today. I'm going to do a significant update on the economic outlook for August moving forward after we hit that significant target, the 4,200 points I've been waiting for on the S&P. And I'm also going to go through the update on the short term, the medium term, and the long term for Bitcoin and Ethereum, as I think we need to have a bigger recap of this. Uh, I want to remove the confusion from a lot of people when it comes to understanding the differences between short term and long term. I know it's a bit of a repeating story here, but to get the bigger picture, uh, I think it's really important to get through a lot of these points. So that's the macro that we're looking at today. Yesterday, we had a short term rejection. Where was this on the chart? I'm not going to spend too long here. We had the news. This is the big pump bar, which was the CPI data coming out that was less than expected. The market then proceeded to fall and we had a four hour rejection. We also had a one hour rejection. So it's very short time frames. The markets did reject that and then have since pumped. However, the pump from that point, for Bitcoin at least, hasn't broken the top in the market that was set back in uh, late July. So it broke it by a few dollars, but we want the close. That's the first of the confirmations on the break. So we still haven't seen that close yet. We could get that in the next day or two. We, we really should see that very soon uh, to continue up in this process in the short term bullish outlook. Remember what we've been covering over the last several days here, short term, medium term, long term. This has remained the same and the plan has basically been to a T on point here. The bullish short term, as I said, Bitcoin, just to make it very clear so that people can understand the difference between short term and titles and thumbnails, all that sort of stuff, short term pumps and dumps, this is the traps. That's why I'm still bullish. Bitcoin ready to test higher prices in 2022, but I think it's going to be difficult and there's going to be trading traps. We are 100% seeing that right now. Exactly as I've written here, ready to test higher prices, yes, difficult. All right, so it's an, I think it's going to be difficult until we see clear movements in macro time frames. Okay, that's just like a bull market, a clear bull market or a clear bear market. So now we're at those turning points, which we have already talked about and we already um, viewed this from May from that first dump. And then we had a clear pattern, just for, a clear downtrend just for a little bit longer there, just for uh, several days to a couple of weeks. And then basically it's been a churny, difficult period to trade because the price ranges have been overlapping a lot. That's where it gets a little more difficult depending on which time frame you're on. Short term, there's the traps, ups and downs. One other point to note here with trading plans for Bitcoin price, what is happening with the buyers and the sellers, the whales, the manipulation, if you want to call it that. Of course, everything is manipulated. So if we get stuck into that whole manipulation, it's a waste of time. The pumps and the dumps. This only came back to about 50% of that news, right? But it's important to note because we've seen a lot of these pumps on Bitcoin and they have basically retraced the entire stretch of the pump. So they are good trading opportunities, but we've been able to take profits quite quickly on those pumps because the market then, we have to take profits quite quickly because the market then retraces. Check out this pump here. So we're looking at the pumps on big news. Uh, you can see that the volume has increased and it's increased again at the peak and then has retraced the entire move of these two bars. Yes, this is on the hour, but it's the same pattern that happens time and time again. So we're trying to learn how to trade these particular pump bars because of what history shows. They are times to be taking profits quickly and just following up on the swing chart. So you can see the swings here and, and there's placing those stops a little higher. Here's the pump, huge volume, market is now coming down, it retraced the entire move. And the first one we looked at uh, in more detail was back in June, July, so it was late June, early July. This was that big pump, the market went straight up. We're talking about taking profits quickly, these are the videos that are on the channel, and then the market retraced 
almost the entire move of that pump. So now you can see why it was so important to look at this as a rejection because what history has shown, especially in these tight trading ranges, the market can retrace the entire move. And in this case, it retraced just a little more than 50% of that entire pump move. Now we're up here, so we're moving from the short term to the um, getting closer to the medium term, but you can see the short term, Bitcoin ready to test higher prices in 2022, but difficult trading traps uh, are continuing to show up. So let's move it out onto the four hour and the daily as well. Four hour, the trend is still up. We still see that quick rejection here, 50%. So we can move this now. Market on a four hour is yet to close above the 24,666. Uh, That's the number we we're looking at for the previous peak. Still waiting on that, the daily. It has moved above there. We're still waiting on a close above those levels, but yesterday was a good close because it was one of the highest we've seen in about uh, a month and a half to two months. So at least that's a good sign for the short term. Bullish, again, repeating it, difficult trading traps, okay? So moving over to the medium term, bearish pump trap. So the short term, as I said, I think it can lead to higher prices here. We're just looking for these levels to be overcome. 26 at the top here, 26,000, basically 900. And then you got the tops back in May as well. So that's around that $30,000, $32,000 level. So into the medium term, yes, the short term leads into that with a move something like this up. Of course, there's going to be ups and downs within that overall move. But I think that is essentially going to be a trap to then come back down. So the medium term is dependent upon Bitcoin breaking past this resistance level at $24,700. Obviously it has to break through that in order to get to that 26 and then of course 28s and 32s. We are working our way there slowly, but surely if it does happen, that's the next thing here. The trap of course is the move up. Everyone thinking that we are starting a new uh, bull market and I guarantee you, you will hear people say, you missed out on the lows you missed out buying under $20,000, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's pretty much just noise from permabulls who have a maximalist mindset about trading or basically just sort of new people with this investor mentality. If you think about old school investors, they are not out there shouting about their bag saying you missed out on lows. It's, it's very, very childish. So we don't need to worry about those people. Those guys really have zero idea of what's going on and it's there to create FOMO. Don't get sucked into the FOMO essentially. So this is the way I'm playing it forward with the information I currently have from the chart. So all the facts in the charts, bearish pump up. That's what I'm waiting for. Of course, we've looked at why and how it can and cannot happen. And then I think Bitcoin will trade below these current levels, come back and test somewhere under the twenty-four, dollars $25,000 level if that is to happen. Late 2022, early 2023. This is a long way off. This is not today. This is not tomorrow. It's not next week. It's not next month. This is many, many months off, okay? The long term, this is looking at the multi, multi months into years. Long term bullish, Bitcoin will see another major bull market before 2026, okay? So that we can squeeze up the chart, look at our weekly and our uh, monthly charts. This to me does not look like a pattern that is ready to take off to the moon. I think we will come back and test out some more levels here between anywhere from where our current low, maybe it goes a little lower, anywhere to that mid 20s range. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at over the next couple of years. All right, so let's get that pretty well clear. That's Bitcoin, that's the, the approach right now that I'm seeing for the micro, the medium term, the long term. And for my longer term bags, this is what I posted to our members on July 13th. I was buying Bitcoin uh, a quarter here. This is for the long term portfolio at a value of $19,700. If you want to join the members, check out the links in the top of the video description. Sure, it's a shill for our education, but this is really where the rubber hits the road, learning how to trade and fill up those investment bags. So $19,700, you can see here, this is from my SwiftX account, um, $7,500 AUD, that was the purchase there. And I also purchased a little um, earlier there at a similar sort of price back in uh, June as well. So that's basically half a BTC to add to that long-term bag at a AUD price and a USD price, around just under that $20,000. Back over to the S&P. This is our major target price range that we are looking for that it hit. We got there, we're about 11 points above. This is great news for the longer term. This is the macro setup here because we are looking at the weekly chart. The reason I look at this is to give us an idea of the outlook for the whole cycle because Bitcoin is still working in with the financial system and it's actually 
tying in tighter and tighter with the traditional financial system, especially when you look at something like Coinbase, purely just looking at the volumes of who is trading this market. The market is being traded during the week, Monday to Friday. These lower volume days are basically the weekend almost every single time or US public holidays. This tells me that it is pretty much tying in very much with traditional markets. They're not trading on the weekends as much as they do during the week. Uh, look, you can just see the pattern here. I don't know how much more clear it needs to be to us that this is getting more and more tied in with the traditional financial system as much as the, the old school BTC folks, the maxis, etc., don't want it to be. This is just what is happening. This is just the facts on the charts here. I can't change these volumes, okay? So back to the S&P, we've broken above that. We have our overbalance in price. That is what we've been waiting for. Now, do we just head straight up from here? I don't know. But if we were to head straight up and break past the, the macro downtrend here, this horizontal, uh, sorry, this diagonal, that is going to be an even stronger sign. Doesn't mean the market will go straight up from here. Maybe we just churn, we break above and then we churn our way out and just sort of head back down as long as we stay above that line. Still a good sign. But even from this point, we've overbalanced. We need some sort of correction coming up soon. That's absolutely fine as well. But um, we just don't want to see this broken by too much or even the 50% level. So the 50% is back at 3,500. I'm still long-term bullish into 2023 and a few years beyond based on this chart alone. And I'm seeing that happen with Bitcoin as well. The overbalance is just another uh, icing on the cake. This was the level that we wanted to overbalance. That was 480 points. We got there yesterday. So that's a really, really good sign. And um, you know that's pretty much all I had to say on the S&P. That's a really good sign there. Over to Ethereum. Can we see the same thing here for ETH? The macro bullish overbalance, that's what we have to wait and see. It is gonna be at about 2150, so $2,150. The point of the overbalance is to show us where the investors are finding value and where the strong money is coming in. And are they now starting to value that asset stronger than they did before during the entire bear market? Remember this bear market for the S&P started in December, January? And this was the biggest move up. This was the most amount of money that they could push the market up. And now we have seen a repeat and slightly more come into the market in terms of points on the S&P. That is the signal here. This is something that no one else watches because it is an, uh, it's a GAN rule. It's an overbalance in price. Make sure you know what it is and how it works to give you that edge on your own trading and investing. It works on all time frames. So for Ethereum, this is what we're looking for. Approximately $2,150, which is getting very close to the 50% level of 2,230 bucks. I've been waiting for some sort of turning point in the market. So if people were taking profits here or the next, whatever period is over the next few days or so, wherever the, the turn in the market happens, not a bad sign either. We're up one, two, three, four. This is our fifth week. And remember, we've been looking at approximately five weeks, give or take, of course, for some sort of um, top in the market before it gets a potential correction, all right? So we're just watching what the market has shown us over its history, and that's what it's shown in the, uh, in the bear markets. Now, to me, it's looking rather similar to what happened in 2018. I don't know if this is going to play out and we break this current low of $800 or $900, but at least it looks quite similar. It is trying to test some of these lower prices up at around two and a half thousand. But I think overall we will see some uh, lower prices again once all of the big news dies down and the hype from retail dies down yet again. So for trading short term, there is a lot of options, a lot of possibilities. Uh, there's a lot of potential here, especially with the cryptocurrencies that are on or in the Ethereum ecosystem like Matic, of course, those things have been doing very, very well. And others like Lido, LDO have also been up hundreds of a percent. So for trading, plenty of opportunities. There's going to be a difference here between the different investors. Are you short-term trading to make gains and put it into your long-term hodl? Or are you just looking for good DCA opportunities on different cryptos like ETH, other things in the ecosystem, etc.? There's That's a difference between the different types of traders. This to me is a great trading opportunity. To me, it does not look like the areas that I wanna be dollar cost averaging into a market. Like I showed you and how I mentioned it to our members back on July, that's where I'm looking to DCA into my longer term positions like BTC. 15K AUD, so somewhere around 11,000 um, 11, USD into Bitcoin for that long term HODL account uh, as mentioned to the members. 
And what we are looking for next is the reversal on some of these markets. Could be a few days away, could be a week or two away. Either way, it's getting close because the timing of these markets are coming towards their extremes that they have shown us over their entire histories. So which investor are you right now? Are you the investor for the DCA or are you a trader? Let me know in the comments down below because this is really important when it comes to understanding what it is you need from the charts. Are you looking for the DCAs or are you looking for the trading opportunities? Comments down below, trader or investor. I'll see you guys at the next video. Like, subscribe, links all in the description, Bybits and SwiftXs. And of course, the members link there. We'll be joining you live on Monday mornings going through all of the markets. Thanks again, guys. I hope you have a fantastic day. I'm gonna go explore roads. So join me on Instagram and Twitter for updates over there of the travels here in Greece. Till next time, have more fun to get more done. Peace out.